We good to go? Um, yeah, after uh, digesting the film, getting a day or two to kind of watch that, just really in all three phases, um, there's things to clean up and there's, there is some positives. I thought on special teams, you know, it was pretty solid throughout. I thought our uh, coverage game and the punter kicked it pretty well. D-Rod did, uh, covered down, guys showed up there. Obviously with Jordan banging through the field goal, that was nice to see early on. Um, so we felt felt that that group was solid. Offensively, uh, did some good things. I did think Luton was good in the pocket. I thought our pass pro was pretty good throughout the night. Took the one sack and it was really a coverage sack. Um, like to get the run game going a little bit, but some of the, the score kind of dictated where, where that was at. I thought defensively, you know, we got some things to clean up. Um, was pleased with a little bit of the tackle for loss. You know, we made the point on third down, and that did show up watching the tape that we got to do better on third down. But we did put them in some situations on third down that, that uh, we just got to execute better on third and 10. Shoot, some of them were third and 11. So that, uh, that part, um, that's kind of after, after watching the tape. I do think, uh, and I told this to the team a little bit of, we're not overreacting to game one. Like, this is the first game after, uh, you know, working all that through practice, but games are different. But also, we're not underreacting, you know, focusing on these details and urgency to improve. And, and that's kind of been the message to the, to the team. Um, so heading into this kind of next week, I know there's a few storylines to talk about with, uh, with this team and with different coaches being on different staffs on really both sides of it. Uh, different players, right? Transfer players on both sides. Uh, recruiting mail. Uh, so there's a lot to talk about with this game. I know that, and we emphasize it with our guys. And, you know, it comes down to playing a game on Saturday. And what we've got is a good opponent we're going to play. These guys can score a bunch of points, uh, active and aggressive defensively. It's a long trip over there. These guys play good at home. They're coming off a great win against Arizona and then a bye week. So uh, we got our work set out for us, which I know our guys will be excited about. You want to play against challenges. And so we're looking forward to this challenge. And I thought it was a good, good day of work getting started today. So having said that, questions? You, you played over there once as a player. I don't know how many times you were as a coach. Just what's your experience playing over there in Hawaii? Yeah, I think the, uh, the crowd can get into it. I think that it is a long trip. Um, I think that Hawaii traditionally always plays really well at home. Um, yeah, we, I played over there as a player. But yeah, I think I've coached there five or six times. Um, and so it's always challenging. Is there any anything outside of any, for a road trip, anything out of the ordinary other than being a really long flight? Yeah, it's a long flight. And, you know, we're going, we'll stay two nights over there. That's what I've done normally when I've been really playing and coaching. Uh, we emphasize the hydration point because it is a long flight and you, you know, make sure you're pushing the fluids there. Um, we will take the team to Pearl Harbor on Friday, um, take advantage of that opportunity to just to show them a, a historical site. Um, and I think that's cool what we can do as, as coaches in this game is be able to do more than just X's and, X's and O's with these guys to create you know, memories and experiences for them. As, as far as your personnel goes, um, do you expect many changes to the first, first team going into Saturday? Right. Um, you know, we usually make those calls later in the week. I do think we're going to continue to give guys opportunity to compete. Um, you know, we played both centers. Both those guys did some good things, and so they'll continue to compete. In the secondary, all those guys kind of rotated, rotated through. Um, and so whether the first snap of the game is different, I don't know yet, but we're always looking to continue to compete throughout the season. Jalen do much today? Or? He did. He actually moved around decent. We'll see how he, he ends here at the end of the week. I'd still say he's questionable, but he definitely did more today than he did last week. And Trayvon? No. no yeah. He's... he's not, not for a while. Not, not for this Saturday, at least. No. Anyone else come out of Saturday's game that is iffy or? Um, not, not really. Um, guys were uh, back to practice today. I know you were just brought up Jalen. You know, I know one person doesn't change everything, but just how difficult was it not having someone with that leadership and veteran, you know, out there in that first game for yeah. you guys? Yeah, it would have definitely been nice to have him, just because he's such so veteran. He's a good player. Um, and we got some guys that we were in their first game back in the secondary. But, you know, I think every team in college football also got a guy missing or two, and you got to be able to go next guy up and respond and, and work. It'll definitely be nice to have him back. How, how did you feel like the, the defensive line held up versus what you saw a year ago? 
You know, I, there, are, there were some snaps that they got some penetration. I think Whitley was in the backfield three or four times, which was different than, than last year. Um, we still need to uh, be able to stay in our, our gap and then contain the edge, which isn't strictly the defensive line. Um, but there were some more, more reps in the backfield than compared to last year. They used uh, the one quarterback played quite a bit, and they, they kind of brought in another guy. So it seems like they've got a lot of talent back there. How different is it maybe this week for you guys facing a team that likes to throw it all over the place where Oklahoma State really tried to run it a lot? Yeah, it's a different scheme, starting really with their pace of play. Um, you know, Oklahoma State wanted to get back on the ball and snap it and go. These guys aren't trying to do that. This is an effective offense, though. And it's really, yeah, they throw it, but they run it effectively, too. I think they ran it over 20 times last or against Arizona. So we got to be able to defend both. Um, this, this offense has been really successful for years, and they got it rolling pretty good. Yeah, you mentioned that. I think their quarterbacks ran like eight or nine of those times are pretty good. And, mm -hmm. and you guys struggled a little bit with that, a little bit the, the breakdown this last weekend. Is how, how important are you focused on, you know, kind of controlling it, you know, the quarterback getting out and maybe a broken play or something? Yeah, you, you want to do that when it's cold runs for the quarterback. And, you know, if he's going to drop back to pass and nothing there and he goes to extend it. So that's a huge part anytime you play anybody, but especially Hawaii, especially the way they're going to spread you out is to contain the queue. How did you feel like uh, Brandon Kipper played in his first start? Yeah, I thought he played solid. I really did, you know, for his first start. Um, he could try to be physical in the run game. Um, really not many reps in the pass pro that he was on an edge, you know. So, uh, yeah, I thought he played solid. You, you obviously brought up the storylines, I guess, for this game. The, the, the recruiting deal that happened last year, what did you learn from that? We just looked into our protocol a ton of exactly how we're getting things out, and we actually implemented some things so that that thing didn't didn't take place again. So we got a fail safe about two or three checks. It was a total data issue, um, but we got it remedied. I had something. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Here, I'll ask while he's waiting. Yeah. The, the, I was asked, why didn't you guys? Uh, Onside kick there um, after you got it down to 16 there late in the game was it? Did you feel like it was just over and didn't? didn't yeah, you know we looked at it. We actually kind of talked about it a little bit after. Um, some of the logic was to keep. It. We, we feel like we got a pretty decent onside kick scheme and we're ready to kind of show it with the the score where it was and so late in the game. Um, just after you watched the film from last week's game, what's the energy been like from the players in practice this week? I think there's been attention to detail. I think there's been urgency, and, and we've talked about that. These kids will respond. They're, they're going to battle. You know, again, one, one game don't define a season, and we talked about that. Um, it's always a big thing, the first game, because there's so much lead-up time, right? There's like six or eight months leading up to this first game. And so, yeah, it's a big thing, but it's a long season, and it, it don't define us. And you know, going off of that, what was, you know, the big message going into this week in Hawaii? Uh, just, you don't, you know coming off of a loss first week. Yeah, I think you're always uh, respected an opponent that's pretty good. We understand the, the travel, and they play good at home. And so we talked about that. we got to have the best week of work we've had so far. And I thought we started off well today. Uh, I had it on my mind and having my senior moment. I can't remember what I was going to ask. Uh, I think you kind of brought it up, the defensive backfield. A lot of guys played, a lot of kind of, it seems like, competition there. How long do you expect that to kind of play out? Were you happy with what you saw? I think the top four tacklers were, were all in the defensive backfield. Just kind of maybe assess where that's, that position group is right now, what you guys hope to see out of them. Yeah, you know, because we, a few of those guys were in their first game, and Nashon and JoJo. I thought Sean Wilson made some good tackles. You know, Omar had some tackles. I think as a group they did miss some tackles as well. Um, and so it's twofold. Those guys got to be great tacklers and cover and whatnot. We got to tackle them before it gets to the secondary. And so uh, that, that as a whole, defensively, you know, each group has some things to clean up, and, and DBs are no different. So after the first game, obviously you evaluate how the players did. How do you evaluate how the coaches did? We do that all the time. You know, we look at it, and there's things to learn, starting with myself. You know, you even mentioned some of the, uh, well, onside kick. Well, you know, still it's a minute 10, whatnot. Is that the right call? So you're always looking at ourselves, and we really kind of start first ourselves. And then, obviously, it, it bleeds down. Because you're, you're trying to put these guys, I know it's a coaching term, in the best positions possible. And I think weekly we need to evaluate that all the time. Um, I like our group of coaches. I really do. The way we uh, 
the way they're detailed, they're coaching them, they're positive, but telling them the truth. That approach has been since day one. Um, so that's what just makes me confident that we're going to go throughout this year and improve. You know, looking back, we talked a little bit about looking at the film. Was there something that stood out on either side of the ball that surprised you? Maybe how well you did or how poorly you did in that, you know, yeah. that you didn't notice during the course of the game? I think Josiah Irish on special teams showed up in that, you know, he's a good player, but real life game bullets, and then all of a sudden we punt, and he's running down and making some plays because, he, you know, he's got the tackle, but then also the, you know, the block in the back was he created because he's beating the guy, so that, that was nice to see. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask about was Irish. I saw him on the one. He was a gunner on the one, and he got down the yeah. field pretty darn quick. Um, but he didn't really do anything on the offensive side. Is, is this just kind of a work in progress? Because, I mean, is he a guy you want to get downfield and kind of open up the yeah. offense a little bit if you can? We did call a couple where he was going down the field. The ball didn't didn't go his way, um, and we just got some good options, I think, on offense. You know, obviously Hodge had the big game, and Tajon caught some balls, and Noah was huge on fourth down. And there's just going to be games like that, uh, but we definitely want to keep him involved. Gum seemed to get involved quite a bit early, and then maybe not as much late. Was that just he didn't play more in the second half, or did they do some stuff that kind of neutralized him? I don't. No, I wouldn't say they did some things to neutralize him. They were we were rotating some, but he did make some some plays behind the line of scrimmage. Offensive line, I know three new guys in there. Just how do you kind of grade them out? I mean, they gave up with just one sack, and mm -hmm. you ran the ball pretty well at times and threw the ball. I mean, how well did those guys kind of you know, yeah. mesh together? As a group, I thought those guys were solid. I, I really did. You know, especially you rotating centers. Um, that's a particular position, you know. Um, but all of them graded out pretty pretty well. I thought, again, the pass pro we had some time to throw. Jake didn't hit it, get hit a ton. Some of that is back to Jake's improvement of moving his feet and diving forward, and pulling the ball on third down. But, no, we were we felt solid about that, that old line. How much, uh, I don't know if this is any concern or not, but when you lose a guy like Tufaga to a team you're playing, you know, a couple weeks later, how much can they learn from something like, you know, how much can he tell them? That, that well, I mean, he can tell them some things. I mean, he was here the whole fall camp, and so uh, he's going to know some calls. We're not changing the defensive calls. In that regard, we're going to probably have to implement some things to keep some away from them. But there's some value anytime a guy goes through a month of, of daily practice, daily install. I'm sure he's got some things. Yeah. I mean, with a guy like with Brandon Kipper, he's two years away. That really, yeah. he really, that's not really much he can, he can. Not that far removed. Yeah. No, yeah. no. Okay. Thanks, guys. Okay.